Spe- speaking of old people, I've got a publication <laughs> here. I was hoping this could provide some uh, humor. It's uh, the Reader's Digest, and on the cover, it says it has the funniest joke since the internet. Uh. So, um, I think <laughs> oh, we're pretty wait, much wait, like, wait, wait, since the internet? <laughs> wait, back since up, Since the what? internet? Like, si- <laughs> okay. Okay, Dylan, first of all, Mom gave you that to put in the waiting room well, at your work. Well, it's, it's got the funniest jokes since the internet. <laughs> since so, the internet. Like, I would ask I you to elaborate on that specific <laughs> sentence, but I don't feel like you, I doubt you have more information than the title. <laughs> well, it's got a picture of Grumpy Cat on, on the cover. With it. So its credibility Cat. is top notch. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and again, it reiterates once in the article, the funniest jokes since the internet. There it is again, um, that cat. So, so basically would, what we're talking about is the best memes since, uh, in, like, in the past 30 years. Hmm. Um, Grumpy Cat is obviously, they're big fans of uh, Grumpy Cat. Oh, it's it, it's the best jokes from the internet. Yeah. Uh, okay, I thought it meant, like, okay, the internet was great, <laughs> but this, this, this issue marks a new era in jokes. <laughs> Um, the next mother load of jokes will be called "Best Jokes Since That Reader's Digest" episode. Or it doesn't whatever. have doesn't have the quite the same ring to it. Yeah, no. Nah. This uh, this probably isn't going to be funny because it's basically what a bunch of boomers think are the funniest things on the internet. Um, here's one. It says mistakes that take the cake. The nice thing about the internet community is that it's happy to point out our boo boos. Hmm. Since 2008, CakeRex.com has been sharing the foibles of bakers who tend to follow their customers' instructions to a fault. And it's got uh, yeah, a picture of a couple of cakes with uh, typographical errors. Like uh, cakes that you eat? Like desserts? Yeah, yeah. Like mm. like, like you would go to a baker. And what's uh, the website again? Uh, it is CakeRex. W-R-E-C-K-S. C-K-S gotcha. Com. Cake fails. They're cake fails. I'm more of a cake farts, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty. <laughs> hey, man, don't knock it till you try it. Come on. <laughs> it yeah, is never mind. Sweet. This is all, like, not funny. <laughs> There's like, nothing in there, like, Charlie bit my finger, or... No. It's just... I can't think of any other ones. Here, you, you, you find one, Ansel. All right, I'll um, find one. I was I was hoping it would be so not funny that it would be funny, but it's just just not funny. It's in that middle zone. Yeah. But what it, I still don't understand the the title. It's trying to get to the funniest things since the internet began. Funniest things they found on the internet, or what? Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's okay. basically like boomers' top memes in the past thirty years. So like, when did illiterate people start making the cover for Reader's Digest? <laughs> like that's 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 a pretty good joke in itself. Since the internet came along and <laughs> did away with internet. printed media, <laughs> right, here's, here's since they stop teaching cursive in schools. Funniest joke since all of our writers went to internet. <laughs> okay, here are three overheard zingers. A uh, guy staring at ambulance in front of Whole Foods. Somebody must have accidentally eaten gluten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hashtag wrecked. <laughs> oh, That's man. That's actually pretty funny. Holy smokes. That made me chuckle. E Pluribus Book Club, thank you for listening. Uh, this is Book Club. I'm Ansel Crowder. I'm Elijah Crowder. And I'm Dylan. Uh, what's your last name, Dylan? Uh, I, I've decided just to go by like a monument, mononym. <laughs> mononym. <laughs> um, you know, all the cool people, all the best legendary people do that. So Not all of them, like three of them. Well, you, l- let's see, you got Hitler. You got, <laughs> you got, <laughs> you got Mussolini. <laughs> And you got you Stalin. Got, you got uh, Tojo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what about Bono Vox. Well, that's that's too many names. He has yeah. he has two names. I'm saying it's there's always an exception. He's literally the best. 
anyway, uh, <laughs> we're especially so excited this week because we have a guest conscious uh, in the club. Uh, it's our old pal and, well, old and continuing pal, uh, Derek Allred. Derek. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? Pretty good, man. How you doing? Well. Oh, pretty great. I'm super happy to be here. Big fan of the show. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Well, you guys do good work. What can I say? I say you can could have been listening to a different podcast. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to get your numbers up, dude. Come on, <laughs> well, help me out here. You got to give me something to work with. You know, I do. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Derek. Uh, reading books is hard work, and uh, you know, I'm yeah. glad that we can we can do that for other people. Absolutely. There's no kidding. Books are hard work. Um, you know, I can speak for a couple of you guys who, no offense, Dylan, uh, I don't think you have any children yet. At least I don't think any that you claim. Um, we don't count the, but we man. don't count the yard kids. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. But He's yeah, got like 11 fucking cats though. <laughs> so I, you, I feel like you guys are totally forgiven for not finishing a book or, you know, I mean, not starting a book, I guess is one thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think that's where you got to draw the line. Like you have to at least start the book. I mean, there needs to be like at least a book club trial or something to, to see if you can continue, but I understand not finishing. Um, when you got, you know, life, life happens fast. Kids take up a lot of your time and I commend you guys for doing as well as you have. <laughs> Well, That's thank good you. To hear. Appreciate it. Yeah, that means a lot. Thanks. That gives me some leeway to like slack a little bit more. Then. Oh yeah. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. You've got nothing but time and expendable income. So good on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> well, uh, Derek, you do. Uh, here, here's the conch. Um, thank you. You are the conscious for this episode. Right um, on. So just. Uh, Bring us right into it. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Well, the book that I chose on my celebrity guest edition of Book Club uh, is titled The Indifferent Stars Above uh, by Daniel James Brown. And here's something that I think you guys miss out on a little bit in your in your clubbing. Again, from my special drop-in last episode, you know, I said that... I've, now, granted, I've spoken to no other book club fan about this so i've just taken it upon myself so here's the deal i'll level with you guys <clears throat> as much as i love listening to the show i have not read one single book that you've read <laughs> outside of other books that i had al already read okay yeah fair so enough. Right. some of them right. have crossed over and that's been great and those have been extra special episodes uh, <laughs> but there's a lot you know uh so i kind of have to read at my own pace with as much as i have going on in life so yeah. Um, I think we need to start with a summary. Sometimes you guys will jump into a book and it'll be like 45 minutes into it. And I'm like, I have no clue what this book's about. <laughs> we actually, the, the funny thing is we talked about that. We all agree that we need to start doing that. But we just, yeah. We have no, uh, we have well, no. A, a big um, part of that is, it, is the word. We, it, we don't have with itness. With itness? <laughs> well, I think a, a, big part a, of, a big part of that, too, is, is it requires us to read the book to be able to do a summary. No, it doesn't. Uh, Goodreads.com. <laughs> I'm, I'm a literally about to drop a bombshell on you with this <laughs> intro that I found. Um, but so, yeah, I think you start with that. You give a nice little intro because it usually goes, all right, the book we're reading this week is whatever. Now about this character that you know, what do you guys think about this character? Well, and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. What Russian book is this right now? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna start with that. We're gonna start with a Goodreads.com summary of this book: The Indifferent Stars Above, the harrowing saga of a Donner Party bride. In April of 1846, 21-year-old Sarah Graves, intent on a better future, set out west from Illinois with her new husband her parents, and eight siblings. Seven months later, after joining a party of immigrants led by George Donner, they reached the Sierra Nevada mountains as the first heavy snows of the season closed the pass ahead of them. In early December, starving and desperate, Sarah and 14 others set out for California on snowshoes and over the next 32 days endured almost unfathomable hardships and horrors. See? That's a, that's a very good summary of the book. Yeah. Yeah, no. That could shorten our podcast by yeah. like 30 All minutes. Right. Yeah. Glad, glad I could join. You guys, uh, uh, let's kiss. It was ACDC. <laughs> See you guys in two weeks. So anyway, that's, yeah. the, that's, the, uh, that's the book I chose. And I would like to say, uh, I went 
round and round about what book I wanted to choose because I, I didn't take it lightly. I ended up taking it lightly, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I contemplated picking something that I'd read a ton before that I really love, could really sink my teeth into, and could really talk about a lot. Um, you know, I think you, you know, for me, that would have probably ended up being like uh, a Hunter S. Thompson book or something like that. Yeah. That I think you guys should do eventually. Something yeah, by him. Yeah, that's on the, I mean, that seems like too, too right. You know what I mean? It sounds mm-hmm. like too, like, too, too something we would do is pick a Hunter S. Thompson. I, I've got, I've got Hunter S. Thompson on my list for yeah, sure. Yeah, me too. Very good. I'll, uh. I don't. Oh. Hmm. He's got some good stuff. Some dodgy oh, stuff. I'm sure he does. I'm just, I'm just sure he does. It's just I've had kids for longer, so <laughs> I haven't read any of it. Heard that. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to say that like this was a book that I love or held something special near and dear for me to bring to you guys. It was the book I was already reading <laughs> Okay. when I got the offer to guest spot. And Man, you're a, you're a natural at this. This is how yeah. we usually pick books. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been listening to you guys for a year. What do you expect? Yeah, you've, there you go. You've ruined books for me. Thanks. All right. Um, but no, uh, yeah, for real. Like I had just been playing uh, Red Dead Redemption Two had just come out, and if you have played it, the very opening of the game, you're you know uh, terribly lost in snow and. That got me to thinking about the Donner Party and how I didn't really know that much about them. Then did some research. This seemed to be like the book that everyone was talking about as kind of being the end-all, be-all guide to it. So I was reading that and then got the offer to be on. I'm like, well, let's just finish this thing out. It's, it's pretty interesting so far. We'll see how it plays out. So, in classic book club fashion, what do you guys think of the book? Uh, I, I really enjoyed the heck out of it. Um... I wasn't sure I would. It's like you said, uh, I, I have the weakest constitution of, amongst us, I think. <laughs> so I, I was like, you know, I was like, oh, this is going to be gruesome. But it, it actually was really interesting. I was into it, and uh, I thought it was, uh, the the writing was terrific. Um, so, yeah, I, I dug it a lot. I, um, I enjoyed it overall. I felt like the... Uh, the author had like several diversions where he would start talking about like relating things then to things today or or, or stuff like that. And I, I think it was a little too like it broke up the flow for me because I would be in in this situation with these people. And then he would like take me away to tell me that GPS didn't exist back then. Or like, yeah, the body mass index. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was kind of bizarre. Yeah, but I mean, I, it didn't. Yeah, it detracted from the the event, but I think it was like I, I think it like enhanced it. I mean, I, I don't think it was. It, it, it didn't for me. It, okay. like, it took me out of like this really. I mean, it's a really grim. Well, like or, or like story. talking about like the 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 uh, medical issues they were having that they they didn't know at the time what it was, but. Like putting it, you know, shining the modern medicine's light on it, actually, I thought added to it and helped you to understand what was going on. I respectfully disagree. Okay, it, it, like it, it kind of derailed the the mood. Okay, for me, I will but, agree. But I mean, with, oh, I will agree with that. But I think without at least one of those interjections to more modern times, um, I got my, I pulled one of my favorite quotes from the whole book from one of those. Things I thought that kind of encapsulated the whole thing. I think it was the story earlier on with uh, maybe like a uh, airplane had gone down with a soccer team or something to that effect. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I think it was a rugby team. Okay, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that was uh, the crash in the um, in the Chilean Andes. I believe they made a movie about it in the eighties called Alive. Ah, yes, that was. That I think you. I think you had mentioned that in the club before, Elijah. Uh, I have. It's one of my favorite films, actually. I mean, I, I guess it. It turns out this is all coincidental that you picked this book, and cannibalism has been a uh, reoccurring topic on this show. You know, I thought about that constantly while this was going on. Of all the, and that you know was part of like uh, the Constitution comment I made. You know, because I thought this is, you know, it's different than like a fictional. Um, what was the book that you guys couldn't finish? Was it Blood Meridian that was so rough? Yeah. 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 See, and I thought with this being 
a, an, an actual account of things that happened, maybe that would make it easier. I don't know. Could make it harder to know that it actually happened to actual people, but you know. Well, on from my side of it, I I enjoyed the book, but I I'm gonna have to go with Ansel on this. I like I well, I don't think Ansel explicitly said so, but I enjoyed it for the breakaways and the the modern aspects of what they were going through. I found that to be the most fascinating part of the book because uh, even not knowing much about the Donner Party except for their ultimate fate, uh, the actual story was just, you know, snow, hungry, this sucks. And then there's not a lot there to really dig into, I don't think. But the actual stopping back and explaining uh, explaining what snow blindness is and explaining how hypothermia breaks you down... Uh, uh, psychologically as well as physically, that was that was fascinating to me. I yes. really enjoyed and it, that. It added to the picture of uh, what went down. I thought, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, on the same token, though, I, I, there's something that happens in this book that I don't really. It didn't bother me as much, but don't you think authors take a little too much liberty when they're when they're crafting a narrative based on you know this? Like he tells you in the prologue, the scant evidence that he had, and then I think one thing that he he painted the scene of Sarah. Sarah and um, oh, I can't remember the names of all the people that got. Jay was eaten. her husband. Jay, Jay was her husband. Sarah Grace. Yeah, uh, he painted this picture of them, you know, under the romantic sky on the wagon train and staring up at the stars. And you know, surely that happened. But I mean, I think it's just you kind of take liberties when you do that. Yeah, I but I kind of forgive him for that because, like, like I, I said in the past, like I, I don't really, I don't really seek out nonfiction works. And I, I think the fictionalization is what I enjoyed most about it, and but and the reason that the uh, like the the asides kind of drew me out of the fiction because it was like a lot of hard, you know, medical science or or, or things like that. And I I, I personally uh, I'm not you know judging anybody else's takes, but I'm just saying like I think it would have been a it, it was kind of a hard read for me. Um, like I wasn't uh, compelled to continue reading, and it, it was because like it kept getting stuck. Like I, I, I couldn't like lose myself in the in the fiction and just mm. go along for the ride as a as an observer of this party. See, I have a theory about that, and I don't really know before I started this what my concept of the Donner Party was. I hadn't done much research on it, and you know to find out that it was a eighty seven. I think is the official tally they give it. Um, yeah, 87, 87 settlers. I think that's where what you're talking about. You can't like there are no characters that you can you can g- grab a hold to because there's so many characters. He spends so much time discussing everybody that I get yeah. lost. And you know, there's an Eliza and a Litha. I'm like, dude, I can't. Yeah, like I cannot recall. I, I can't remember what all these people are up to, or who they're married to, or who's already yeah. dead, or who killed who, or what. That was a big mm-hmm. problem I had with it. Was just. I kind of got lost in the, I don't know, quote unquote narrative of it. Yeah. And I think like, you know, in his, not really defense, but I, I see like he was trying to do like this balancing act where he had uh, like, like it was fiction and the non It was a fiction and also like a, an historical account, mm-hmm. uh, a, a sort of research base or something you could base your research on and not, you, and I think, you know, you kind of need that like the family tree and stuff, even though, it, yeah, it's like Derek said, it was not. So, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. Sorry, my bad. Thought you were done. I am now. Well, it, it was kind of like, you know, the Silmarillion with all the names. Like, it, it really was like a <laughs> maze yep. of names, especially at the beginning, because it, it was even more than just the Donner Party, because it was talking about the the first party that Sarah's family set out with from – Illinois. Yeah, it was. Or I think it was three parties coming out of Illinois yeah. in the beginning. And yeah, they all kind of split, and yeah, it was just. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, I did. Uh, you know what the I difference the... between Twitter and the different stars above? What's uh, that? Twitter limits you to 280 characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did the. Uh, I did the audio book. Uh, Instead of reading it for time constraint reasons, okay, hold on, hold on, a, hold on, hold on. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> hold the, hold narrated the by if Michael I had a whistle, Pritchard. I would blow it now. <laughs> okay, well, no, this no, is, no, 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 no. Well, well, you guys are sorry, uh, a lot, or, uh, Ansel and Dylan. I'm about to pull the rug out from underneath you. Um, I also read the audio book. <laughs> oh no! And that is one of my <laughs> that is one of my points that I was bringing to this table, and I am absolutely ah. stunned to hear you say that, Elijah. 
Because you, yeah, you guys, first have, ever audio. You guys have these, railed these so cool. hard on audiobooks, and I uh, think they are such a valid form to digest a book, especially because like I can do it in the car. I can like I got speaker in the shower on the way to work. You know, while I'm laying in bed, while I'm doing other things. If you have, you know, for me, I can like pro, you know, I've got such a powerful brain that I can multi, you know, multitask, <laughs> listen to something, someone talking to me in my ear, and also be washing the dishes or something like that. See, I, yeah, I can't do that. Uh, I can't pay. It well, to, like, yeah, I wouldn't say we've actually railed on audiobooks. Uh, I, 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 I will confess, yeah, I have railed against audio say, run the run the but, tape back. Listen, <laughs> but, but damn you, it, we do have, record this. You have this. this I mean. I mean, it's a dishonor to the the whole Donner party, the whole Donner party, <laughs> no, no, to no. sit in your air conditioned room <laughs> listening to their story. <laughs> did you sit I've outside got, the whole time you read this book? I no, did. I, did sit, I, did I built a fire four in the morning to finish it. So uh, <laughs> I listened to, to admit, I listened to uh, mine on an old phonograph, like I had it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I had to scratch it up I had real to, bad. I had first. to crank it, keep cranking. That's actually a superior medium. If it's it actually sounds like oh, you're actually there. the quality, oh, God. Shut the, up, the gigabits. Shut up. Oh, shut up! Um, I will say, uh, I'm sorry, Elijah. Uh, part of my uh, distaste for audiobooks might be because my first audiobook <laughs> experience <laughs> was the Gospel According to Biff, Christ Childhood Pal, um, <laughs> and like that was like a last resort because I just could not finish that book. Uh, and then yeah, I'll, we were playing like Donkey Kong Country too, and we're like, <laughs> "Why don't we, why don't we play Donkey Kong Country and listen to this at the same time?" We See, were trying, this is all starting to make way more sense now. This is all we were trying to like, beat all the Donkey Kong in defense of audiobooks. All these things are proof that audiobooks rule. <laughs> Can you read a book that, and, that and play Donkey rule. Kong? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, B- B- Biff was a bad audiobook. Like, <laughs> there but, are uh, great I, examples of audiobooks, uh, you know, because, you know, if you you said you don't like to read a lot of nonfiction, but, um, you know, if you read something by like a comedian or something you like, typically they're the yeah. ones who are who are reading it, yeah. which is entertaining. Um, you know, yeah, that is true, after right? I read all the original Harry Potters, I know I've gone back and listened to them on audiobook and Jim Dale does the reading of that. And that's like, for me, like the cornerstone of like perfect audiobook engineering and everything. So it's just like it's a well produced one can be a really pleasurable experience. Yeah. yeah. When I when I worked at a Borders, there was this uh the Bible on audiobook, but it had like James Earl Jones yeah. and it was like a major production. <laughs> and I was like, damn, I want that. Yeah, that's I was the, gonna say Charlton Heston, but James yeah, Earl Jones. It was James Earl Jones because I know that because uh in the early episode of The Simpsons where Homer eats the blowfish that he's going to die from he goes to sleep thinking he's going to die listening to the bible on tape as read by james earl jones <laughs> yeah well yeah somebody saw that uh that episode and they were like hey we need to make that happen <laughs> but it, it wasn't just him it was like a full cast like you know cast of characters mm. uh reading re- sort of a dramatic reading of the bible yeah it's kind of like you, you remember an English class when you read a play and like each person was assigned a part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like everybody was like timid and afraid to read and everybody had the same monotone. Uh, it's the opposite of that. <laughs> so, Derek, you did the audiobook. Was it the one narrated by Michael Pritchard? It was. Yes, sir. That's it's amazing. Yeah, it's it was really good. good. It was good. I, I sorry to, to uh, derail you there a bit. I'll let you continue. But that was a perfect segue for what I needed to talk about audiobooks. So yes, no, 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 yes, no, I did. Please no, continue no, no. on with your talk about it. No, I was finished. I was just I was just going to mention it at some point. He says uh, they didn't know what to do, and in the back of my head, I thought, let's build a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, I'm I'm cannibal yeah. the musicaling this thing. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was so hard to not do that. We can name I'll him Bob, you, can... or we can name him Beowulf. <laughs> I, you, I kind of made a uh, like an, my own audio book out of this in my head because like since uh, since our last recording and this recording, we Ansel and I watched the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Yeah, for oh, real, it's on my yeah. list, man. It's, it's so, so good. It's, a, it's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of narrated it in, in my head as Buster Scruggs, <laughs> just that real folksy kind of talking. And uh, yeah, it, it definitely made it more enjoyable. No, I, I think like just the the content, like after seeing that movie, it's like that's kind of my jam right now. And like this book kind of fit like with what I wanted to read after seeing the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Well, so. you're, you're you're probably ready to play some Red Dead Redemption too. I tell you, oh, what. it's yeah. so good, it's oh, so good. Oh, I'm oh, not ready to buy a oh. PS4. They're still like <laughs> too expensive, and I don't really game anymore. I'm kind of 
I'm kind of lame anymore. I don't game anymore. <laughs> old Sarah didn't want to sit around the campfire and watch old Jay get eaten, if you know what I mean, so she didn't watch. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's you probably wouldn't watch either if somebody was eating one of your loved ones. I reckon you wouldn't. <laughs> Like uh, one thing, one thing I can def- definitively say about audiobooks is you can't really highlight things in audiobooks. To <laughs> yeah, I have book nothing like to bring to the table other than I enjoyed it. Uh, I but took I, I, I took notes along the way, just in my notes app on my phone. Okay. Well, as I, as it, as I listened, but yeah, you're right. Jeez, I agree with true that. True multitasker. I know, let dude, me I, let me ask. I you wanted all to come prepared, but let me tell you something. Let me. Oh, sorry to interrupt okay. again. No, go ahead. We man. could have not read this book. Okay, I have <laughs> just... pr- I have printed in front of me Wikipedia article <laughs> on the Donner Party. <laughs> And you had and, somebody else read it and record it so you could listen to it. No, yeah. No, I I, I read it and recorded it myself so I could okay. listen to myself okay. bl- like play back. Like I'm really into hearing myself talking. Never mind. I've said too much. Um but no, like the Wikipedia article is literally I read it in twenty minutes and it's everything that the book did in audio form in ten and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Minus yeah. minus the little uh you know, conjecture that the that the author threw in about what he thinks might have happened, right? And the story about the rugby team or whatever, and the the uh, uh, father or the family who was caught in their car mm-hmm. in yeah. the snow. But th- I did learn. I'm trying to find the term. I can't remember the term where, um, like where your body, your vital organs release all the blood they've given up, and they release them back to your limbs. And that's when you yeah, and you get, uh, you get para- paradoxical. paradoxical undressing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's some, yeah, that sounds right. Where if someone's at the brink of death, buried in snow, and they strip and just run because they're burning. You know, they're they're so all their limbs have been lacking blood for so long. Now they have this injection and they can't handle it. So I thought that was absolutely fascinating. I was unfamiliar yeah. with that term. Yeah. That Again, this this goes back to what I'm saying. You're saying the Wikipedia you could do 20 minutes. That's that's why I think that lends more credence to what Ansel and I are saying is that this novel was fascinating by taking just I mean the story of the Donner parties. They're stuck in snow and they eat each other. You can't do 10 hours worth of book on that. Well, see, here's the mm. thing. I came. I was I was here for this book. That's all I needed to hear for for the cannibalism. I was here for the eating <laughs> folks. And yeah, it was beating around the bush way too much for my, for my liking. <laughs> now, this this book was clearly or just the 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 subject of the Donner Party for this uh, for John James Brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for for it was clearly like something that he was deeply inter- like he was completely fascinated with mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And this book was a labor of love, and that really came across like it that in a way that no Wikipedia article ever could. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so like I appreciated it for that. This was like this this was a deeply fascinating subject for him and this was his his artifact to to show his love and love's a weird word for it. I, but. I think hunger would be the correct word. <laughs> <laughs> um to be fair, like I skipped like the entire epilogue once I kind of figured out that it was just him kind of like recounting his journey where he was like retracing the footsteps of the party. Like, yeah, uh, he's just trying to find a grave that probably doesn't exist, and yeah, yeah. he doesn't find yeah. it. And yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like, and I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done already. Like, I got what I came right, for. Yeah, but he, he does go to the <laughs> point where it's like they take a left instead of a right. He goes to that, that part, and he was just like, he, he say it, he says it was like it was right there. It was like yeah, so like, close. Yeah, like right. they couldn't see it for the for the rift was in their way or something like that. But all they had like to do the was piles of snow. I think if I remember yeah. right. But well, I, yeah. I think they decided to take the path less traveled, and it made all the difference. Yeah. Well, they decided to take the path that went downhill because mm-hmm. they were tired of going uphill. And if they had just gone uphill a little bit and looked yeah. down, it was like right there. Well, like we're we're kind of getting into the uh, the meat. I want to say of this book. And, um, <laughs> of course, you want to say that. Um. So I, I kind of want to hit some highlights here, the th- things Sick that I get highlighted. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, my first one is, um, th- th- this is just something kind of funny that I discovered early on in the book. Um, it said, uh, in the dappled light of those woods, Sarah could gather hazelnuts by the bushel and fill buckets with sweet, creamy pawpaws. <laughs> so 
I just, I, I, I guess it must have been in a daze, and I read the phrase "sweet creamy pawpaws," <laughs> and that that got that got a good chuckle out of me. What what is a pawpaw? Like, is it's obviously like some sort of I have no idea. Flower? Hold on, I'm putting I'm putting sweet creamy pawpaws in uh, Google. Oh Jesus see what Lord! Comes up with. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, what is this? Lemon party dot org? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Check out this fruit website real quick. A delicious. Whoa, a, no. A delicious oh, sweet no. creamy. Oh, no. Pawpaw, no. <laughs> uh, creamy, maybe. Sweet, to be determined. <laughs> well, there, there was another term I'd never heard before. Pig awful. O-F-F-A-L. Okay. Like, uh, um, awful, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that's that. That's a Red Dead Redemption ter- uh, term that I learned within the past month because yeah. someone gave me some awful and I'm like, what the hell is that? So, <laughs> all right. I appreciated that. It's all full circle. Yeah. Um, Isn't awful just uh, intestines? It's chitlins, right? Uh, I, I think it's it shit. Organs. I thought it was organs. Uh, I thought it was waste, leavings, droppings. Entrails and internal yeah. organs of animals used as food. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Chitlins. Damn. Pawpaws, the sweet, succulent fruit you've never heard of. Uh, I guess I need to. This is from mentalfloss.com, and I'm going to need to mental floss after Derek's little <laughs> binge there. Uh, cross a banana with a mango, add a custard like texture and a bean like shape. That sounds uh, delicious. I want a sweet, creamy pawpaw in my mouth. <laughs> uh, you have to go to the. <laughs> All right. You have to go to the Ohio Pawpaw Festival. Seriously, though. You guys have got to stop saying Pawpaw. That is what my child calls my father. And I may never go home for Christ giving again. Uh, Thomas Jefferson had Pawpaw trees at Monticello. Yeah, they were black. Lewis and Clark snacked on Pawpaws when they ran low on food. I think a lot of the Donner Party snacked on pawpaws as well. Wasn't that a thing in the Jungle Book? Didn't they? Uh... If you pick a pawpaw or a prickly pear, yeah. and you prick a raw paw, next time beware. Yeah. That's... Don't pick a prickly pear by the paw. When you pick a pear, try and use the claw. Yeah. But you don't need to use the claw when you pick a pair of the big pawpaw. Yeah. Totally. Well done. Okay. Wow. That's, I... uh, yeah. that's off the top of the dome there, Elijah. It's pretty Man, cool. I love me some Jungle Book. I've probably but lose seen, the I've shit. Pro- I've probably seen it like once. Like when I was two. You need to have kids or, you know, at least take in some of those off the street that are probably yours. Well, I, I've, I've, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> He's drowning in cat awful right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I do, I do have five cats and that is, that is plenty of cats. Yeah. That is enough cats. <sighs> The eating of dog in this book was prevalent as well, but I mean that's not really surprising. It was just the eating of named dogs. No, like he, there was. She a, wrote a letter. We had to eat. What was his name? Um, Papa Tracker was one of them. And, uh, Tracker Packer. No, Cash. Yeah. Cash was the one that I've. Cash. We had to eat sweet little Cash today. Yeah. But l- yeah, let me ask right. you this: um, Do you feel at all like? You know, I hate to sound like the guy on airplane who's like, they bought the ticket. They knew what was about to happen. <laughs> like, <do you laughs> I d- say, let them crash. <laughs> yeah, like, do you not feel a little bit like the kind of, you know, th- this this was the, uh, th- this was too big a risk to really take. And well, you here, kind of, well, here's the thing well, I gathered from it. Like, they were doomed from the outset. No, no. For, two, for two reasons. For two reasons. Like there was that one part where it talks about like they didn't take the advice of not leaving after a certain date mm-hmm. because they would get stuck yeah. in the winter. And then also the I forget the guy's name, but the guy that like charted the guy the who wrote the book, the Hastings guy, yeah, yeah. Was it Hastings, Lansford Hastings. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And like he screwed him. And then there was also like one guy later who was like I think he was in partnership with Hastings that like received letters saying do not send people this way. Yeah, and he just totally was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna s- not tell anybody about that." Well, that was just like, because if if he could compress that information and then people started making it through, then he the trading post guy I forget the name, but you right. know his his business was going to boom. Absolutely. If if he were to just keep this information hidden, um, 
his business was going to blow up. So I think he is probably the most at fault because Hastings tried to make it right once he realized, like, he was just, you know, he he was misinformed. Yeah. And when he got the information, it was just too late. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, but still, I mean, I guess, I don't know. They, they were having like chronic malaria in Illinois and they were just sick of having that, I guess. So they, yeah. but they didn't have to go to California. I mean, they went through like Mississippi for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Fertile enough. I, um, no snow. I don't know. And it was all before the gold rush, so they weren't really going out there to try to like strike her rich. And some right. of them were already very wealthy, you know. You, you know, this book showed you the, you know, material goods mean nothing mm-hmm. at a, at a certain point, you know. Yeah. yeah, they're just shedding stuff left and right, trying to lighten the load. Um, and so, you know, money I don't think was a was a huge factor. I think it was just like manifest destiny. They were just right. going, they, going they... out there to to be out there and and have their own place. Right, they they were doing God's work by civilizing mm-hmm. the uh, the natives, and the Mexicans too. They're k- yeah. k- kicking the Mexicans out of the off the western coast. Uh yeah, America, America. They mm. they, they, they did uh, observe the glorious Fourth of July. The glorious Fourth, yes, indeed, by shooting in the air <laughs> with live ammunition. You know, a, a lot of ch- a lot has changed since uh, like eighteen. What was it, forty two or whatever? What was the date of the expedition? No, they left May eighteen forty six. Forty six. Okay. Uh, some things haven't changed. We still observe the glorious Fourth and fire our guns in the air with whiskey and the firing of. Live ammunition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we give, uh, yeah, we sell, yeah, whiskey for the men, beer for the horses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I throw, a, I throw a pair of moccasins on the grill, and we chow down on some leather. <laughs> mm. uh, that's, that, a, that's a manly Ford celebration for you. <laughs> oh yeah, that that'll be a good segue to my next highlight here. Um, this is, uh, it's still fairly early in the book. There were no vegetarians among them. They were serious meat eaters all. And as they made camp each evening, they could now look forward to feasting on roast fowl, grilled steaks, rich stews, and pot roasts. So they they, they were very serious about getting mm. their meat. Um, that was a bit a bit of foreshadowing there, actually. Oh yeah, a little uh, heavy-handed, I believe. But I mean, that's kind of the thing. Like this book is inherently spoiled. Like, yes. The, the ending. Uh, I mean, I I actually didn't know that much about the Donner Party. Yeah, I knew it was I, like neither did I. Either. Either. Yeah, yeah, I knew, so I I knew it was cannibalism. I knew it was uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, but if you uh, asked me, if you asked me, you know, six months ago, I probably would have said, you know, if you asked me how how large was the Donner, how large was the Donner Party, I probably would have guessed like fifteen people, maybe. Yeah, same yeah, here. Like yeah, one definitely. Family. I thought fifteen to twenty people. And I didn't yeah, know it he, consisted of me, like, the, when it the happened, reeds, would... the graves, and all these other families. Like all yeah. com- all comprised it. I had no clue about any of that. Yeah, same here. I I probably have too many like highlighted sections here. So some of the things I highlighted were just for my personal future reference for like a, you know, the uh preservation and preparing of uh certain <laughs> foodstuffs. But uh <laughs> Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? Well, I've, uh, that one's let's see. We did sweet creamy pawpaws. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- this is one that I wanted to talk about. The, the uh, bare necessities of life. The guy, yep. that, the guy that was like the Mexican governor of California. Mm-hmm. Uh, General Santa Ana. No. Uh, <laughs> Elijah did a racism. <laughs> uh, no, that was the guy at the Alamo. Yeah. It's just the only one I remember. It's not racist. It's just uh, I'm old. It, yeah. Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo. That's it. That's all it says right here. I don't have his first name. But it says his uh, empire was centered in a fortified compound in a two-story adobe house he called Casa Grande. And the fact that it was named Casa Grande <laughs> made me think that this guy was actually just like a modern-day American that found a time machine yeah. and like <laughs> <laughs> went, went back to California and was like, Oh, I'm uh, I'm the governor. This is uh, this year's Casa Grande. His only grasp on the Spanish language is Taco Bell, right? Yeah, 
And he kind of surrenders California in the same sort of a <laughs> je, you know, je ne sais quoi, whatever. It's just, yeah, it's not really mine anyway. Yeah. What about, there was a guy who named his ranch uh, Rancho Carne Humana. You yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a little too on the nose. I was talking about he didn't, a time like, machine. He didn't time even traveling. know that, like, he didn't know about the Donner Party. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, he had to come back in time and said, hey, okay, this is a good name. Because who would name their ranch that? Sh- seriously. <laughs> like human meat, human meat town. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. I think the only thing I highlighted. I don't even need to pull up my e- ebook, but it was like my e reader. But it was like where one of the graves girls like writes a letter and basically she said, "Hey, uh, best advice I can give you is uh, don't take shortcuts." <laughs> 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 No, I didn't highlight anything, but uh, if I had to bring something that just really sticks out in my mind, it's the albino hand that one of the families had, um, and it was it was mentioned that he stayed in the wagons all day and then came out at night while the others were asleep and did menial tasks around the uh, around the camps. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, just the mental image I've got of this albino guy creeping around at night <laughs> doing stuff while everybody's asleep was just pretty, uh, I don't know. It's not really creepy. It's just like, damn, I'd like to see that. That would be, if you were an Indian or a Native American, whichever you are, and you ride over the hilltop and you look down and you see the sleeping wagon train, you're like, yeah, let's go get some scalps. And then this albino thing comes walking around. Would you think twice? <laughs> Well, it that actually kind of made me think of uh, the show, the IT crowd, the guy that lives like in the <laughs> server room. <Yeah. laughs> I would think, like, uh, I mean, I think an albino scalp would probably be a prized scalp. I, I would think. I don't but, know. You know, the Indians know. Would they might worship him as a god. I don't know. No, you know, Indians had albino people yeah, too. Surely, so I mean, it wasn't like new to them. Surely not. Mm. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, there's tribes in Africa that still kill and eat the livers of albino people. So, and that's a real thing because they think it's magic for some reason. See, I don't even it think the, the the cannibalism in this book was the worst part of it. I think it. I like the detailed kind of description and explanation of like the human what the human brain goes through when put mm-hmm. yeah. when put to something like this. You know, yeah. How we talked about you know, how their hunger basically took over, but they're documented cases of people not eating for way, way, way longer. But when that's all you have to think about and you see all this meat in front of you, you know, your brain takes over, um, you know, like in the beginning, uh, one of the old ladies, mothers traveled out with them was one of the reasons that they got, you know, they got started late already. And then they stopped for like five days because she's like, well, I'm going to die, but don't leave me here. Just take me along and just drop me off wherever I die. Um, mm-hmm. and then when she did, they stopped for like five days and that put them back even farther. Yeah. Um, or like the old man who couldn't keep up when everyone had to walk on foot, maybe through the, uh, salt flats or the salt desert. Yeah. Um, that was during the salt and, crossing. you know, with his blackened split open feet, he just sat down and they just kept on trucking and then there he stayed. It's like, well, all right, well, sorry, dude, you can't pull your own. We can't help you anymore. That, that mindset is something that, um, it's hard for me sitting here in the air conditioner modern day to comprehend that I could make that decision. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And it is also very good. Like the, uh, the atmosphere of like almost madness and desperation. Uh, it, it, that part was really well written. Uh, you really got a sense of what they were going through. And just yeah, definitely. the children, you know, they, the part where he describes, all the different ways that the ch- you know children are lost on the trail. It's like yeah, they yeah. just wander off, or they get accidentally shot, or they get kicked by a horse, or, or crushed by <laughs> under the wheel. Yeah. yeah, it's like oh mm-hmm. my god, that's why these people have seventeen children apiece because they're yeah. ex- you know they're expendable. It's like you know you've already beat the odds by becoming like a three year old, and you haven't died yeah. yet, but now. They've got a whole different set of challenges, so. Yeah, but now there's this guy with tuberculosis on the side of the road. Let's give him a ride. <laughs> Put him back there with the kids. Get him immunized. But yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's uh yeah, it's hard to imagine. <coughs> uh but yeah, I think the worst part is not necessarily just the cannibalism, but the idea of like eating your loved ones. That's really stomach turning to me. Like that's mm-hmm. that was I, the worst part. See, I don't. But they didn't. They didn't. Some of them did. They, Some of them did. No, no, they, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. They split them up. Like if it was your loved ones that went to the other camp, you did. They didn't take their own loved ones into their own no, camp. No, that wasn't yeah, afforded were, to the children who needed food and yeah. just didn't know any different. I, I know towards uh, the end they definitely there were some kids eating their parents, but you know they they tried to make it work that way for the adults that knew where to you know it's like where to source the meat from. Um, right. But for the kids, it's just like, at a certain point, just eat it. Here's food, eat. Yeah. Mm. And uh, since, since we're getting into the, the, the meat and potatoes of this, uh, this event, uh, I'll just bring up a related uh, highlight here. Would you please uh, stop saying that? The smell of roasting <laughs> meat is largely the same, no matter what type of meat, and unbidden. <laughs> it stimulates the appetite mighty, mightily, activating the salivary glands, awakening the gut, Grabbing the attention of the brain. So when it had cooled enough that it did not burn their lips, they sat down in the snow, weeping, their eyes averted from one another's faces, and took their first few tentative bites. Then they ate. Um, and they ate, and they ate. Yeah, but um, just so we're clear, I will eat you guys <laughs> if I need to. Yeah, absolutely, I, man. I feel that l- completely. Like, I, I, <laughs> I think if there was some way, I don't know, how, how do you... How do you legally get human meat? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. or you don't legally. You don't. It's it's like, well documented. Uh, you taste human flesh every time you eat pork. We taste just like pork. Hmm. It's been well documented. It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> rush. Like the exhilaration is mean, not there. I mean, it's not. The, some of us might be a little more gamey than others. It's not but. the deadliest gamey. So, so, some of, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but uh, reading on sort of the same section here, um, the author says that most people faced with starvation most of the time choose to die rather than resort to cannibalism. And that's just kind of – that mm. doesn't make sense to me. I would yeah. – no. I, I could put any sort of emotional feelings aside uh, in order to ensure my own survival. Like, I, would, I, would, I would carry a bottle of Tabasco in my emergency kit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought it really so, so. interesting that like one of the first things they did once they decided to make that plunge and go all in is they would take the head off, take the arms and legs off. Yeah, dehumanize. To, yes, it. exactly. To dehumanize it, that makes it more more palatable. Mm. Yeah, and, and and then there was that one guy who wanted to cross the line and wanted to uh, kill one of their party, kill the women. Yeah, and and for specifically for the meat. Uh, yeah. Prior to that point, they had just uh, waited until somebody died, and then um, did they fang. Well, that one guy, I can't remember his name, but he was like uh, the guy who survived with all the gold and stuff, and they caught him. And pretty the German. Pretty clearly, he just turned cannibal and was just killing people and eating them. He uh, mm. he did it to them, you might say. Yeah, you, you could say that. <laughs> uh, and there was hey, that, like y- the guy who tipped off the Indians, like, hey. These guys are about to eat y'all. Y'all need to get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think it actually. I don't think it actually said they tipped them off. I think did he, it? I think it, he did. It, it kind of. Yeah. That was like speculation on the author's part. I think. Part. It, and, you know, I think the author said they probably just kind of <laughs> could see in the eyes. <laughs> those of poor those dudes. Like, them. They they got brought on late and like you know they had to be like oh my god you white people are like so stupid <laughs> why are we here like you know they were just pissed about it the whole time yeah, yeah. and then with the and first they chance they getting, got to be like. Oh my God, we got to get out of here. They yeah. were gone. And then they come, come across them later and they shoot them and hack them up <laughs> and put their pieces in the back when they're too weak to run away anymore. Yeah, white America. Um, <laughs> America. Uh, you were saying the, even the women were meat eaters and they were hefty meat eaters. That reminded me. Did you, did, did, you, uh, did you folks hear about the vegan that went to climb Mount Everest to prove that vegans could? No. Is this one of those Couple jokes from the internet? Yeah, this is a setup. <laughs> no. Yeah, <this> a- <laughs> no, this is not a joke from the internet. This is a real thing. Is a vegan woman and her husband, and they they wanted to prove that vegans could climb every. Yeah, she died. Oh, well, there you go. She she didn't make it. Yeah, and like I I read it thinking it was an internet joke, and then got into it. I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. And like, but it just got me to thinking when you mentioned that, like, if that was you, would you? 
Would you tell everybody, hey, I'm going to climb Everest to prove something? I mean, would you... No, you wait until you have climbed Everest. W- right. And then right. you tell everybody. No, because then yeah. it's, not a spe- you know, it's not a spectacle if you wait until after you've done it. It's like... Yeah, but I mean, if you're like, watch, I'm going to prove that this is a, an alt- a viable a viable diet, a dietary lifestyle for active mountain climbers, and then you die, um, then you've, you've, you've brought a negative to your charge, I guess. Should have ate your Sherpa. Well. <laughs> so the whole Jamie, so the, the whole the whole book, once they introduced that George Donner had a, one of his hired hands, he had four or five hired hands. One of them was named Charles Berger. <laughs> I missed that. I don't and remember that. They ne- he never paid that off. Uh, no. Ber- Berger came up a few more times, uh, but he was just always doing something. But then I don't know what became of him, and he specifically <laughs> never hit that nail on the head with the burger reference. Yeah, and that's why we got, and that's how they got the name Burgers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that that really is just proof that it, you know this book is it's a little little too heavy on the history, not enough on the story. Yep. Because if uh, if this were a cannibal, the musical situation that that burger would have paid off. Oh, it writes itself. But like, <laughs> seriously though, like the the style, like the historical novel type style, is like it's it's really hit or miss. Like it, you, there are really bad examples of that, and there are really good examples of that. I think this is a a good example, even though it wasn't really a novelization. Uh, it was sort of in that style, which when I first started, I was like, oh crap, because <laughs> like. <laughs> So many times, like, I think there's a book called The Devil in the White City. Oh, man, yeah. It kind of, like, I mean, it was interesting, but, like, the the novelization of it just, ugh, it does it. I just hate it sometimes. And this was, like, when this book started, I was like, okay, this, here we go again. But it was actually really yeah. good. And, you know, like, Gore Vidal uh, was really good at historical novels and stuff like that, and um, yeah, I wanted Devil in the White City to be so much better. Like it had so much more potential. I yeah, guess sure. when I like, I knew what it was about, and I was very, very geared up to read it, and then it just dropped yeah, down this, to nothing. I'm like, oh my god, what a slog! Yeah, this, and I think, yeah, the style ruined it. I think, in my yeah. opinion, um, it didn't have to be like that. But anyway, yeah, that like, I guess my point is kudos to James Brown um, for using this this style that's really a tightrope walk and uh you know get yeah. to the other side he truly is the king of soul oh yes agreed agreed i was concerned when i brought when when i finished this book that you guys would because exactly what you just said it could either go one way or the other with this type of novel and it like it, so much of the time it felt like i was in a history class yeah. reading a history textbook which is totally fine because I'm really into that, but not everyone is. And so I was really interested to see what, what your guys' takeaway was. And I'm p- pleased that uh, that you liked it as much as you did. Yeah, no, it was good. Good good suggestion. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, it was something I was already reading. It, it was based on nothing. I was fully prepared to come in here and, you know, if the book sucked and bag on it, but I ended up enjoying it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I got a, a couple more quick highlights I want to get to. Uh, this is fairly late in the book. Um, and this is when I discovered that it was actually all just uh, capitalist propaganda. <laughs> it says, uh, even the Russian and Ukrainian catastrophes paled in comparison, though, with the appalling horror that descended on the Chinese people between 1958 and 1962. A combination of drought floods, and the economic policies of Mao's Great Leap Forward called s- some 30 to 40 million of them to uh, starve to death. And yeah, that's just uh, pure propaganda, historic but revisionism. Well, <laughs> the Great Leap Forward was kind of a bonehead move, I think. <laughs> um, look at where China is today, dude. <laughs> well, Oh, the proof is in that pudding. <laughs> gr- I mean, I, I have a, you know, forgive my <laughs> ignorance if I'm wrong, uh, but the Great Leap Forward, that was where, like, he made all the farmers bankers and all the bankers farmers. Is that – and then, like, half the people <laughs> starved to death? Is that switch, what he did? The old switcheroo. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was eating money. Yeah. Good times. He did, he did the thing that everybody says, you know, if everybody 
weighted tables, the world will be a better place. He took that and he did it. <laughs> he made it's it like real. Everybody's a waiter now. <laughs> and then it was a catastrophic <laughs> error. Yeah. And, and the one other thing I want to talk about this book, I don't really have a specific highlight that kind of – there was one thing that I wish I had highlighted in retrospect. But uh, all throughout this book, it, it goes to show, like, the, the hardiness of women over men – um and Absolutely. Was actually stat, that was surprising there was a stat towards the end that like of all, like the 40 something people that died like the vast majority of men were men in the donner party mm -hmm. um and i just found that really interesting yeah it wasn't like the first 14 that died were all men it wasn't till like the 15th was it finally a woman yeah it just seems so much more resilient well and also you take into account like these are women that have children and husbands and mm -hmm. families with them and like they're doing doing everything they can what do you say a woman can't do the same thing a man does or what's going on right now oh, no no i'm just saying that like they they took their jobs very seriously like mm. yeah, they were psychologically harder yeah, as well try, try, mm. they were they were more willing to hold on to life right. when it when it became time to uh, well, I think he uses several, he alludes several times to the ability of a human being to just will themselves to stop living and that these women didn't have that and they didn't right. have that option. I mean, that, that comes with motherhood though, Th to be honest. Okay. That's okay. Gotcha. Thanks Elijah. I was trying to paint Dylan in a sexist corner <laughs> over there and you bailed him out. Got, got out of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, not on my, not time. on my watch, buddy. <laughs> not on my watch, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much all my notes. I, overall, I enjoyed the book. Yeah, hey. I definitely enjoyed it, and and I enjoyed the audiobook experience. I'm going to start doing that more often. Yeah, there are bad oh. ones, but there are good ones. Yeah, to each his or her own. Uh, I'll stop knocking the audiobook if that's what yeah, you that, enjoy. At the at the very least, yeah, accept it as a an acceptable way to consume media. It is a valid medium. Yes, I I, I uh, you know I'll I'll I think to. I don't know. I'm going to put aside my Luddite tendencies and I'm going to say <laughs> audiobooks are okay. Um, Derek. Yes, sir. Um, if, if it's not too, uh, if, if it's not too much to ask, um, I kind of want to take that conch back and give you and Dylan an opportunity to reclaim the Paul Stanley cup. Okay. That sounds good to me. Uh, all right. Let me um, grab this thing right oh, I, I wasn't notified. I'm not prepared. Uh, for it this. doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> kiss or oh, so I can be, I can be challenged for the Paul Stanley cup at any time. Oh, yeah. Is what you're saying. It could happen like even outside the club. Like, well, no, see like, no, see Derek has the conch this week. Who's picking next week's book? Well, I have it now. He just gave it back to me, dude. Yeah. Who, well, who's picking next week's book? I don't know. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we burn. <laughs> yeah. But either way, uh, um, Man, that sounds good to hear live. And, yeah, and 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 how is a three-way round of Kiss or ACDC going to work, well, Ansel? You're the defending champion, Elijah. So uh, Derek and Dylan will constitute a team. Uh, no horseshit. That is totally <laughs> unfair. See, that's that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking Derek deserved the opportunity yeah. to. Uh, no, I, on his own. No, no, no. I was not informed. I, here's what happens: Derek and Dylan go at it, and Winter can take on for. I mean, because I'm I'm undefeated. You're not gonna throw me down in the newcomers and the losers bracket on one episode. <laughs> Stop being such a pansy, Elijah. <laughs> no, if you're not so gonna good. happen. No, you can talk to my manager. <laughs> I'm not putting my uh, cup on the well, table. Well, you can play it under protest, but this is how it's gonna be. Okay. <laughs> um. And besides, it's more for the comedy. This is a comedy podcast. There's no. Oh, so it's funny to you when I lose. No, yes. it's it's yeah. Okay, well. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, in that case. And uh, edit this out. The Paul Stanley Cup isn't even real. There is no cup. Uh, wait a minute. Cup it's is real. Hold on. It's, it's, uh, it's real to me. It's real to me. You guys have never mentioned that, not once. <laughs> <laughs> and. Sorry, Man. kid. This look behind the curtain is <laughs> yes. like the Wizard of Oz all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Say it ain't so. I will not go. Never mind. We will, we'll get one made eventually. <laughs> okay. When all the when all the when all the the supporting dollars. So we come are we teamed up or are we sponsors? individual? What happened? Yeah, it got to be teamed up because I, I okay. only have enough of a game for 
Whatever. Yeah. I'm playing. Because real talk, if you make me individual and I win, I'm never coming back, and you're never seeing it again. <laughs> see, see, you have not thought well, this Dylan, through. Well, Dylan would have to defend it on behalf of both of you guys. Mm. So I okay. think the the league the league is not going to stand for this, Ansel. All right, whatever. Uh, I think Ansel's commissioner, judge, <laughs> executioner. That's right. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, Elijah, uh, you have the Paul Stanley Cup. Would you like to go first, or would you like to defer? I defer. Okay, so this is for... Uh, uh, under protest, I defer. Okay, whatever. <laughs> the under protest can be applied. You can stop saying it. We get it. Uh, D&D, Team D&D. Uh, Kiss or ACDC? Uh, I was made for loving you, baby. You were made for loving me, and I can't get enough of you, baby. Can you get enough of me? My, you've got to be fucking kidding. Yeah, me. I agree. My, um, my gut, re- my gut reaction says kiss. Okay, my knowledge of music confirms that. So you, you've heard the song before. You're just gonna lowball it in there, like <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, that was underhanded. Well, yeah, that's I mean, that's gonna be uh, the knights and Satan service. Uh, is that your final answer? It is. It is indeed. <laughs> what's uh, what's the song? I, I I don't know the song. It's Apparently. called uh, "I Was Made for Loving You," and it's from Dynasty, their 1979 okay. blockbuster. Okay. Um, I don't now. Don't let Dylan. Don't let this fool you. Like ACDC and Kiss are both two of my most hated bands. <laughs> like, uh, uh, but I do know enough that. I have heard that song before. This, I mean, unless the next one's something to do with rocking and rolling all night, <laughs> then this. we'll see how the rest of this goes. Okay. Uh, Elijah, kiss or ACDC? Um, Protest. <laughs> I know that it's evil. I know that it's got to be. I know I ain't doing much. Doing nothing means a lot to me. Living on a shoestring, a 50-cent millionaire. Open to charity, rock and roll welfare. <laughs> Sitting in my Cadillac, listening to my radio. Rock and roll welfare. <laughs> Susie, baby, get on in. Tell me where she want to go. Man, <laughs> <laughs> this is such bullshit. Stop complaining and just—I mean, you're, you're like ACDC. You would have been the first to die in the Donner Party. ACDC. <laughs> this Final is answer. Stupid. It's ACDC, final answer. Oh, oh yeah. That's uh, Down Payment Blues from Power Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> Later he says, uh, uh, I'm living in a nightmare. She looking like a wet dream. I got myself a Cadillac, <laughs> but I can't afford the gasoline. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, do it again. I was laughing. What? Okay. Uh, I'm living in a nightmare. She looking like a wet dream. I got myself a Cadillac, but I can't afford the gasoline. <laughs> it's pure, po- pure poetry. Like, why wouldn't? Why is the lyric not daydream? Nightmare daydream. Like, is yeah. he just turning it on its head? For I don't know. That's rough. They're Australia. It's a it's a language thing. Wet language dream. Theory. It means something different over there. They don't have a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of sharks. Yeah. Okay. Don't don't look at it, Dylan. It's not fair. Did you see it? No, I did not see okay. it. What was it, Dylan? Protest. What was it? Whisper it. They can't hear you. Um. Team D and D. Kiss for ACDC. They'll call you names and spit in your face, but legends never die. Just pick up your guitar on your knees and pray and hold your head up high. And on the eighth day, God created rock and roll. On the eighth day, God created rock and roll. <laughs> Man, you are lowballing out to them. This is mm, you say all that, random. You say that. Yeah. I have I have no clue. I know I know precisely. I don't know this, this one off the top of my head. See, I, when you read the lyrics, I try to repeat them in my head in the cadence of the ACDC guy. Yeah, okay. And see if it fits like his screeching like, I got you names, it's bad in your face. I, I don't feel like that one hits that cadence. Dylan, thoughts? Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Um, I feel like it might be more, like might be Kiss because of the contents, but I think more because of the the way like the way it's written on the paper it doesn't feel like the way that guy would sing. 
However, would, do you think the Knights and Satan service would be admitting that God created rock and roll? Mm, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's go with because that. Because without God, there is no Satan. That's, yeah, that's fair. So that's they have to know fair. that he's real. Yeah, so Kiss is our final answer? I'd say so. Yes. Yeah! All right, got it. Good job, guys. That's, uh... And on the eighth day, that's from their <laughs> album, And Lick It Up. Uh, no, from no, their album's just called Lick It Up. Oh, it yeah. came out in 1983, which is a great year. The year of my birth. Mm, bad year. <laughs> 82 for life. Yeah, well, that was a good one, too. <laughs> Uh, okay. Here we go, Elijah. Kiss or ACDC? Mm hmm. Hey, Mr. Businessman. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you could have found her. I gave you all the clues. <laughs> wait, no, I'm wait, just kidding. Wait. Uh, hey, Mr. Businessman. Uh, head of the company, are you looking for a lady? One who likes to please? Hey, Mr. Businessman. This one likes to tease with her special service and her French qualities, but she won't <laughs> sacrifice what you want tonight. She won't come across unless there's money in her hand, and she's calling all the shots. She got you by the balls. 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 That's ACDC from the album Ball Breaker. Um, ding. Final answer. Doesn't matter what album it's from. That's ACDC. Uh, you got the band right, but it's actually from the Razor's Edge, 1990 mm. classic. Uh, Great okay. record. <laughs> Great record. Uh, so I think it's tied up at two. Is that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. We're both perfect. Um, AC, to to no, no future notice, ACDC, they, they like talking about their balls. <laughs> like that, that seems to be a recurring theme. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> okay. D&D &D team. Um, hey, you, look in the, uh, hey, you, look in the sky. <laughs> Sky's on fire. Look in the sky. <laughs> flames burn higher. Sky's on fire. Flames burn higher. Sky's on fire. <laughs> I know you, and you know me. Tell me what it is you want it to be. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's tough. Is that it? That's all I'm giving you. Oh, no. Uh, mm. Using your method, I can definitely hear ACDC guys screaming that. Sky's on fire. I can too. Um, now, the order has gone kiss ACDC, kiss ACDC so far, right? Right. So, to throw us off the trail, I don't think we go back to kiss. I think it will double on ACDC. And, yes, it does sound, I can hear him screeching that. So if you're good with that, I'll go with that. Okay, we'll we'll say we'll say ACDC. Yes. Yeah. Aww. Okay. Uh, you guys batted a thousand. That's uh, "Skies on Fire" from Black Ice, one of their more recent okay uh, <laughs> novels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Elijah. Now is this the mm -hmm. is this uh, the final question before this overtime? is the final question? He has to get it right to retain the cup. Mm -hmm. No pressure. No, it doesn't matter. It's under protest. It's fine. You can if you're okay. Protest is really doesn't mean anything. It just means you're being a dick about it. <laughs> it doesn't mean you get to keep the cup if you lose. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be contacting my I'll be contacting my local uh, league representative. Commissioner, you've never uh, stated. Uh, what your position is on kneeling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but go ahead. Throw the question out there. Okay, Elijah. Yes? Kiss or ACDC? Mm -hmm. I took an elevator late one night. This lady by my side looked like she might. The doors were closing. When I asked her to take a ride with me, come here, baby. She took my finger... Here's a button to press. I raised my thang, and she dropped her dress. I'll take you on a cruise you'll never forget. She said, we better move because I'm already wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah. Damn it. 
Could you read it again, Alex? <laughs> yes, I really I can. don't want him to. <laughs> <laughs> there was too much laughing in it. Okay. I, I didn't catch Seriously, it all. One more time. time. I took an elevator late one night. This lady by my side looked like she might. The doors were closing. When I asked her to take a ride with me, in parentheses it says, come here, baby. She took my finger. Here's a button to press. I raised my thing, and she dropped her dress. I'll, I'll take you on a cruise you'll never forget. She said, we better move because I'm already wet. All right. The parentheses gives it away. Thank you. That's a kiss. Are you sure? Definitely. Final answer. Final answer. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Would you all have said ACDC? Uh, I, I would have, have said ACDC. Uh, I think so, too. I felt like it was yeah. a little I was, too lewd. Yeah, I, don't know. I was I leaning like, for ACDC. I, feel like, well, I don't know why I feel like Kiss is like a classier band. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. They're more wholesome. <laughs> no, but I mean, the parentheses, the harmonizing vocals, that gives it away. And he said he okay. raised his thing. He didn't raise his balls, so it threw yeah. me off. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, it's called Take Me Down Below. Um, <laughs> Gross. It's a, du- <laughs> it's a double entendre, I think. Uh yeah, this is a dumb chorus. I'm not going to read that. That's from, um, <laughs> let's see, that is from the album Monster 2012. So, like, it's, I, uh, I, I can't speak to the quality of their music, but the lyrical quality has been consistent. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's a, I mean, that album just came out. <laughs> anyway, not, not to be confused with the R.E.M. album. Monster. I was going to say, yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. This is going to be the last question, um, and I'm going to have you guys answer simultaneously. Sudden death. If it's a tie on this one, Elijah retains a Paul Stanley Cup. Um, have, have you thought about how three people answering simultaneously <laughs> is going to work? <laughs> Elijah, you're going to text me in the in the chat. Okay. And then... Um, and this, uh, which which chat window? The one that's under protest, right? Yeah, uh, Derek, <laughs> okay. just don't look at the chat. Just no, seriously, Dylan's chat window or yeah, just, just it S- doesn't send matter. It to, okay. send, yeah, it send it to send it to just me. Okay. Okay. Here we go. The fur. Here comes the Fuhrer. What? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Start over. Start over. You were you were glitching. I, I didn't I didn't hear. I had a Fuhrer, false Fuhrer, 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 Fuhrer. Yes. Okay. okay. Not, not a- like. F- uh, okay. Yeah, not like, dear Fuhrer. <laughs> Fuhrer. Press F to pay respects. Fuhrer, here comes the Fuhrer. Kick the dust, wipe the crime from the main street, await the coming of the Lord, hanging round with him low down and dirty, bring an order from the boss. What's the furor about it all? Leave your pant and bust your balls, kicked around, messed mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. get your hands dirty on the killing floor. I'm your furor. I'm your furor, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it is F U H R E R. I'm your furor. It Fuhrer, sounds like baby? it. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Jesus. F U R O R, furor. That's not what that word like. You that doesn't make sense. I'm your furor, <laughs> no. baby. I didn't write it. Don't complain <laughs> to me. <laughs> oh man, has Elijah sent in his answer yeah. yet? Yeah. So you guys okay, can discuss. So we can discuss. I, I say, mean, I, say, I mean balls. I think we should test the balls theory. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Eliza's going with the same thing, so I figure we'll tie out on this one and just get another crack at another one. Wait, how does he know I'm going with the same thing? Because it's the balls. Wait. Anyway. What? You love balls. Are you... Lo- what? I'm in the... <laughs> um, Protest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's got all the ACDC hallmarks. Dirty and balls, like, separate <laughs> from each other. There may be a song called Dirty Balls. It could be the next one. But anyway. I'm, I'm sure we'll find out if there is. But yeah, let's go ACDC. Okay. If you said ACDC, if you said KISS, Elijah, you said ACDC. So it's a tie. You retain the Paul Stanley Cup. Congratulations. Uh, But there is an asterisk on this one because uh, it's it's under protest. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. 
It's fine. I removed my protest no, officially too, now. It's too late. Uh, do you have any winning? <laughs> I have Now I, I have it, it under yet. protest because <laughs> we didn't lose, see, but yet we didn't win. It's a two-way street, Elijah. You see how that works? You opened up uh, Pandora's box. Oh. <laughs> well, just, just, then I'll... Do I get a chance to win Pandora's Cup? No, but you get, you well? get a closing... Uh, Did I win Pandora's box, too? Sure. Why not? <laughs> All right. Uh, congratulations. Thank you for playing... I think Pan- whatever I think Pandora whatever don't don't sneak up with like two challengers on me again man that's <laughs> nerve wracking that's not cool I, I'm sorry you you could have sourced uh, Sarah for help but Sarah's busy and she doesn't give a shit about this podcast <laughs> and I mean let's be honest are you gonna find two more qualified competitors than myself <laughs> and Dylan yeah there you well, go. your back was up that's... against the wall so congrats kudos yeah. man you did you did well. I, I can, thank I can, you, thank I can, you. I appreciate that, Derek. I appreciate it. I'm sorry you had to be brought party to hey this, man. but I'm glad I didn't embarrass myself. I, yeah, I can live with the fact that we batted well a thousand and, and yeah. still didn't get the cup. Well played, well played, indeed. We gave right. it our best shot. Good job, guys. Uh, everybody's <laughs> happy. Everybody had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the conch back, Derek. All right, thank you, sir. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I guess we'll, you guys have anything else? We'll go ahead and start wrapping this thing up, uh, uh, get some ratings. I would uh, just say it's kind of rude oh, to have a get, guest on your podcast and make them host the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I feel, We're breaking new I feel ground comfortable here. enough having listened to it that uh, I get the format. I can lead yeah, this. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. He is the self-appointed helmsman of the listenership. I came so. in really hot oh, and really yeah. pompous, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to yeah. let my hubris hold me back now. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, y'all, y'all got any ratings? I got a rating. Hit it. Uh, I give a, the indifferent stars above the harrowing tale of a Donner Party bride four severed fingers out of five. It was finger-licking good. <laughs> well done. Good history. Um, fiction, historical fiction novel. Uh, liberties were taken, but you got to do that. Uh, it wasn't overboard gruesome with the cannibalism and the interjections of modern science into what actually was going on through the minds, possibly, of Donner Party members. I found absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Derek. Okay. Ansel, what That's you got? That's four severed fingers out of five. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a Chris Gaines. I'm going to give it a Chris Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, A, it's raw stuff. And, B, <laughs> it's probably too edgy for for it to catch on with the general public. <laughs> so, uh, Chris Gaines is my... Uh, is Chris my Gaines name. is my alter ego that works out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always in the gym. All right, Dylan, what you got? I've got a it's a Oregon Trail game over screen that just says you have died of cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any I don't have any reasoning behind that. It's just something that I want to see. <laughs> That's awesome. It's 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 Oregon Trail to the reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is that? What is the uh What's the symptom again? The you undressing, dys- dysentery. dysentery. The oh no, the uh, paradoxical undressing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you <laughs> the subtitle for Oregon Trail too. Uh, okay, you, Derek, you got a rating for us? Uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. This, uh, you, like I said before, that you guys all dug the book. Uh, I did as well. Um, you know, it, it taught me a lot about a subject I was kind of in the dark about. So that's always good news. Um, the part that really bothered me was when the snowshoe party was setting out, they made 14 sets of snowshoes for 17 people. So that's why this book is a 14 <laughs> pairs of snowshoes out of 17. Very good. 14 pairs. That's going to be a lot of snowshoes. Yeah. Brilliant. Just this three more. Like, figure out how to make three more, man. Cut some sticks. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, and then it was the kids that didn't yes, have snowshoes. No, no, I know that's <laughs> insane. It was a ten-year-old, and Good he turned back like a mile in. He's like, "No thanks, no snowshoes. I'll rather die sitting on my ass than walking around." It's like, yeah, it's like he knew he was like the 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 food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, were, they were just gonna tie him and drag him through the snow to keep him cold. <laughs> All right, very good. 
So uh, who gets? Where's the conch going? Do you yeah, where, where does this thing? Where does this thing go right now? I, I feel like Elijah, you can you can pick next. I feel like this is kind of my my episode. And all right, I can do that because I was kind of inspired. Uh, slide that conch over all right, here, please. Here you there. go. All right. Thank you for the conch back. Uh, next week, uh, two weeks from now, we'll meet again here at Book Club cast.com and we'll be discussing uh we're going to bring it back to mississippi this uh inspired by Derek's book i've decided we're going to go ahead and do mr william faulkner's as i lay dying um not historical fiction uh nothing to do with cannibalism it should be a good time for everyone involved uh so uh here you go back to you Derek. and wrap it up all right well uh sincerely i know that you know we've made a lot of jokes it's it's been a real pleasure yeah, to, man, it's uh, been awesome to, to have get it. to hang out with you guys. Like, I don't yeah, ever absolutely. get to see you anymore because we're all yeah. over the place. Um, That's right. But yeah, uh, let's keep in touch more often. It's I, I would truly, I love your show. I do. Even if I didn't know, it helps that I know you guys. But I do really enjoy your show. Um, I would still listen even if I didn't know you. So keep up the good work, man. I hope you, uh, hope you guys keep it going for a while. Yeah, thanks, uh, dude. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That's Thank really you. cool. Thank you. And I... Uh, you're welcome back on anytime. Yeah, dude. It's been uh, a blast. If there's Thanks a book for... that we're reading that you're like, oh, dude, I want to get in, just let us know. You're, always, <laughs> you're welcome to club with us when ebbs. And that, awesome, that goes That goes for the rest of uh, the HMS listeners. Yeah, sure. Just uh, hit us up. Yeah, let us know. Well, I think that about does it. Uh, good clubbing, guys. Good clubbing. Uh, let's put it in. May, you want to put it in? We'll, we'll put it in. Book All right. Cl- book club on five, three. <laughs> five. So it's let's 23. Five to account for the lag uh, <laughs> going overseas. One, two, three, four, five. Book club. Book club. Book club. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, dude.